Hey friends, my name's Christina and you may have taken my creative writing class at the Carnegie Center or at your school, but today you'll be joining me in my home for this class. I miss you guys and I'm so happy you can be joining me today. It is a wild time and I think that in times in which we're missing our friends and sometimes feeling intense emotions, many of us find ourselves turning to books, movies, TV, poetry, drawings, paintings. It's a time when we're reminded of just how important the arts really are. As young writers, you can use this time in what you observe to create some powerful work that captures this historical moment, or maybe allows someone to live in your imagination. I don't know about you, but I have been taking lots of walks around my block lately, and I've noticed that a lot of people have decorated the outside of their houses with green lights and have decorated their windows with cutout hearts in different colors as a way of expressing a sense of community and support in this difficult time. Maybe you've seen something like this too. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. So today in our class, we're going to make our own paper hearts to put on your window. But there's going to be a twist because we're going to make our paper hearts into a poem. So the first thing that we're going to do for this project is cut out our paper hearts. It might be good to start off with four or five hearts, but you can do as many as you think is good. You want them to be large enough because we'll be writing on the hearts. If you have colored paper for this activity, that is great. If you only have white paper, that's great too. What you'll want to do in that instance is you're going to want to use colorful markers or colored pencils to make sure that your hearts are still vibrant. And I'll show you how to do that a little later. So, when I cut out my hearts, what I do is I fold it in half, like so. Then I cut a half heart. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly. And when I open it up, it looks like this. Ta-da! So you can cut out your hearts using the folding in half method, whatever you want to do in order to make a heart that is big enough to write on. So once we have our hearts constructed, we're going to write a poem. And the poem that we will be writing today is an ode to the colors that we're using in this activity. So what's an ode? An ode is a poem that honors something. And here we're going to be honoring our colors on one hand, but in another way, we're going to be honoring this vibrant and beautiful world. So let's take a look at a poem that functions as an ode to color. This is a poem by Marge Piercy called Colors Passing Through Us. And let's see the ways in which she honors colors. But first, I need to say that this poem is published by Alfred A. Knopf, and we thank them for letting us read it out loud in a video during this time. Colors Passing Through Us by Marge Piercy. Purple as tulips in May, mauve into lush velvet. Purple as the stain blackberries leave on the lips, on the hands, the purple of ripe grapes, sunlit and warm as flesh. Every day I will give you a color, like a new flower and a bud vase on your desk. Every day I will paint you as women color each other with henna on hands and on feet. 
red as henna, as cinnamon, as coal after the fire is banked, the cardinal in the feeder, the roses tumbling on the arbor, their weight bending the wood, the red of the syrup I make from petals, orange as the perfumed fruit hanging on their globes on the glossy tree, orange as pumpkins in the field, orange as butterfly weed, and the monarchs who come to eat it, orange as my cat running lithe through the high grass, yellow as a goat's wise and wicked eyes, yellow as a hill of daffodils, yellow as dandelions by the highway, yellow as butter and egg yolks, yellow as a school bus stopping you, yellow as a slicker and a downpour. Here is my bouquet. Here is a sing-song of all the things you make me think of. Here is oblique praise for the height and depth of you and the width too. Here is the box of new crayons at your feet. Green as mint jelly, green as a frog on a lily pad twinging, the green of cos lettuce upright about to bolt into opulent towers, green as grand chartreuse in a clear glass, green as wine bottles, blue as corn flowers, delphiniums, Bachelor buttons, blue as Roquefort, blue as Saga, blue as still water, blue as the eyes of a Siamese cat, blue as shadows on a new snow, as a spring azure sipping from a puddle on the blacktop, cobalt as the midnight sky when day has gone without a trace, and we lie in each other's arms, eyes shut and fingers open, and all the colors of the world pass through our bodies like strings of fire. So when we look at this poem, we see it's filled with imagery. So what is imagery? I like to think of imagery as description in our writing that lets the reader make a picture or a movie of what you're describing in their own mind. And when we do this, we're going to make sure that our images appeal to the five senses. So what I mean by that is we want to use our words in a way that will allow people to experience the five senses, which are taste, smell, touch, sight, and sound. So in your own paper hearts, let's write our own odes to colors. And it's okay to use March Piercy's poem for inspiration or even as a template. Oftentimes in building our toolkit of tricks to use as writers, be it using imagery or another device, it can be really helpful to look at what other writers have done successfully. So I'm going to say on each color, you can do what Marge Piercy did and say the name of the color so in this case, it's green, but you'll do this with all your paper hearts. And then you can say, as in, and include your own image about green or whichever color you're working on first. So I'm gonna do a brainstorm, and I like to use plain white paper for my brainstorms and a brainstorm is just a way of getting your thoughts on the paper before you put 
your poem on your heart, which is going to be sort of like a last draft of this poem, right? The brainstorm is for writing that can be pretty messy. So for each color, let's try to think of how we can use our words to appeal to at least two of the five senses, right? So we're going to try to create images that are going to appeal to the senses. Now, if you appeal to five of the senses, that's awesome, but try to do at least two. I'm going to start off with the color green, and I'm going to ask myself, what does green feel like? Well, to me, when I think of the color green, I think of nature, I think of trees, plants, leaves. And so when I think about what green feels like, I think of walking outside of my home in the morning when everything is kind of dewy and my feet may even get a little bit wet from the dewy grass. So I'm going to take my brainstorm sheet and I am going to write dewy plants because that's what I think of when I think of what does green feel like. I might even draw a picture of plants with raindrops or dewdrops on them. Okay. So next, I'm going to think about what green looks like. So when I think of the color green, what picture comes up in my mind? And the first thing that comes to mind for me is vines. I think of vines. So I'm going to draw that right here. I'm going to draw lines. I think of vines. I also think of trees. Uh, more specifically, I think of when I was a child and I would climb up trees, how through the leaves, the light would look green. So when I think of what green looks like, I think of that. I think of vines, maybe milkweed vines. I think of trees. I think of climbing up those trees and just seeing that beautiful green light that comes right through the leaves. So after I have my brainstorm, I am going to put together a stanza. So what is a stanza? A stanza is a group of lines in a poem. In the poem we read by Marge Piercy, the poem had a stanza for each color. So there was a green stanza where she described different things that were green. There was a red stanza where she described different things that were red. So we are going to take our brainstorm and take one of the colors that we have done, green, and we are going to create uh, our stanza on the green heart. So I'm going to give you an example of what that stanza might look like using our brainstorm. So I wrote, and again, this is based on my brainstorm, green as in the ferns pearled in rain, as in the milkweed vine where the butterflies gather, on their long journey home. Green like the light passing through the leaves as we climb the old oak tree to try and reach heaven. So that is a very simple stanza and you are going to make a stanza for each of your hearts. So this stanza is going to describe the color red, it's going to be an ode to red. This one is going to be an ode to blue, it's going to describe blue. This one will be an ode to yellow, it's going to describe yellow. And here is an example of another stanza, so what maybe your yellow stanza might look like. Here's another example. Yellow as in the burst of dandelions after a morning rain. Yellow as the bee circling and circling the flowers. Yellow like the last light of the day, the air still 
and silent. So again, you are going to take all your hearts and write stanzas on them that describe or honor each of the colors. If you are using white paper for your heart, you are going to write your stanza in the color that you are describing. So here is my stanza about the color green that you already heard, but it is written on white paper using a green marker. Here's an example of what your poem will look like when it's all done. Each heart will have a stanza on it, and when you put them all together, it will make a poem that is very unique because you'll be able to hang it on your window and bring a little color and brightness to the world through your poetry that other people will get to enjoy. So there you have it, your colorful heart ode poem for your window. I like to think of writing as a way of mining little treasures inside of us and sharing it with other people. So if you do this project and hang it up on your window, we encourage you to take a picture of it and share it with us on Facebook using the hashtag Carnegie from your couch. That is Carnegie from your couch. I'd love to see your work. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you stay safe and as always, happy writing.